Hello everybody and welcome to Resident Arcade episode 66, The Reimagining. It's been a long time since RA last did a show, it's almost three years in fact. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this time around, so let uh, me start by introducing the new team. My name's Chris, as people who have listened to the show before will know, and I'm joined by two new co-hosts, Matt and Denz. First of all, hi Matt, how are you doing? Hi Chris, great to be joining you here for version 2.0 of Resonance Arcade, I'm ready to get going. Good stuff, good stuff, and hello Denz, how are you doing? Hi Chris, not bad, really glad to be part of Resonance Arcade, uh, first time in the realm of podcasting, but I mean I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in, so yeah, let's go. And there's a few nerves as well today, even I am a little bit nervous, I've messed this intro <laughs> up about four times, but we're going to do our best to keep you entertained and we're going to do our best to stay as professional as we possibly can. But then again, previously... <laughs> Resonance Arcade isn't, hasn't been professional, it's been full of all kinds of nastiness and heavy opinions, so we are where we are. Um, so yes, returning listeners may have noticed that we are no longer live. What we've decided to do, we've actually, within the last few days, decided to go with a, um, keep our faces on the stream. Previous to that, we were just going to go solely with a podcast, but... It works out a little bit easier to do the editing with uh, with faces and recording something. Danny was going to do something mad with a an EQ and <laughs> like he was going to upload it to yeah. just a, an EQ up onto YouTube. It didn't make any sense. So yeah, that's why we want this way. And um, we've also decided to drop the visual elements. Um, anyone who's seen us before will know that we used to stream videos of games while we were talking as well. And I used to switch between um, between the views. It's we're mostly not going to do that because of YouTube's content ID system and we're probably going to get flagged and all the other bollocks that goes around with it. Um, and also, we just can't be asked to be honest with you. It's a lot of effort and it takes my focus away from the actual show as well. We very well might change the format in the future, but for now, uh, you just have to put with our ugly, up and up with our ugly mugs. So, on to the show. This is a complete reimagining. So, the first show we're doing is going to be an introduction to the new hosts. We're going to talk about games that we've enjoyed it's still a gaming podcast we're gonna games that we've enjoyed recently games that we've we've grown up with uh, and basically just about us and about our gaming history etc uh, it's going to be a little bit self-indulgent but hopefully the people who are returning know that that again is the case with this um so we're going to get going who wants to go first who wants to talk about their background a little bit any takers well, i guess i will um All right Matt. So well, I've been playing games since I was about five years old. Started on Super Nintendo, was bad at it, and not much has really changed since, if I'm honest. But you're still playing Super Nintendo? <sighs> no, I'm still bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was big into FPS games for quite a while, so I, I grew up on stuff like, I think the main things like COD and Halo was always a big one for me, so I'm really excited that it's finally coming to PC properly. Um, other than that, I've I don't know. I guess it's kind of a very similar trajectory to a lot of people. I've played a lot of WoW. You know, I've dabbled with all sorts of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I try to keep my uh, my hand in modern games, but I end up playing Binding of Isaac most of the time, just because, yeah. Go Binding of Isaac, know. sorry. I thought you said Binding the Visor. I was like, that's a one I've heard of. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's where you play it like this. <laughs> it's a new VR game. You have to weld a VR headset to your head. Yeah, it's hard with all the tears, though. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? I played Binding of Isaac's, um, Isaac fairly recently, and I tried to play it with some friends in co-op, because you can have... Mm. Is it Can they control the enemies or something like that in it? The, it's um, How it works is you basically separate off into like a little... various little babies that can like play with you on the same map. Oh, yeah. But, it's kind of a risk uh, reward thing because you get a bit of extra damage, but they take your health if they do that, and if they die, then you've just lost that health. Right. So I know we didn't enjoy it. Put it that way, it wasn't. It didn't <laughs> quite work for us in multiplayer, but we did the same with like Spelunky recently. We tried to play that co-op, and it's just chaos. Chaos. It's <laughs> pointless. Um, it's. I, I think it's the uh, the biggest issue with trying to play. Sort of. Uh, were you playing just on one screen as well, or? Yeah. 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 It's just, it's so hard with modern games to keep on one screen. It's not too bad with things like Isaac, where it's bound to one screen, but yeah, Spelunky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cause I, that, that was a problem. We were moving between like, it, it was following one character and every, if you, as soon as you go, if someone else goes off screen, it, you just die, you know, and you, and you, you've got a time limit as well. If mm. you don't keep up with each other and people like my wife, for example, never uses the run button, whereas I'm running everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, enough about, enough about me. So. Danny, 
or dens yes. or whatever you want to call yourself. We're all yeah, we're yeah, all, all friends here. Yeah. I'll um, <laughs> just stick to dens. Um, so yeah, my gaming history really starts out on consoles. I suppose I think I nicked my dad's Panasonic 3DO, mm. which uh, that's an that's an old. To be fair, when I first saw it, I was like, you know, even for then, it was pretty archaic looking. Um, that's where I started. Um, moved on to like uh, pretty much. I'm just going to say FPS games, but it's actually just the one. It was Unreal Tournament uh, 1999, I think it was. And Brilliant. as soon as my dad had a PC ready or you know powerful enough to to play that, I was on it for four hours every day after school. And if anybody wanted to use the computer, book it in. <laughs> um, but yeah, after that, I kind of like wanted my own space, then went up onto like the PlayStation 2, which was like Time Splitters and Devil May Cry and that good stuff. Um, and then after the PS2, it's pretty much straight onto the 360, as I think quite a lot of my friends were around that time. And that's when I really got into like online gaming, um, which I really did enjoy. I'd say it was probably like one of the peaks of my gaming sort of life, as it were. Um, and then it's only actually very recently I got back into PC gaming. Well, I say recently, it's sort of recent in my memory. It was like around the 2012 mark it's right about when i started working properly and um, been able to afford the components and stuff and then since then it's just been like obviously you've got steam and you've got all the stuff that is just available to you you're kind of just continually buying things and playing all kinds of stuff um so yeah i mean still into my fps games like quake and stuff and unreal tournament i'll still definitely dabble in those but as you know and um matt obviously goes to maps as well that's something else that also keeps the first person shooter genre going is his lineups really because obviously mm. i'm always there everyone now so yeah it keeps you a, see, it keeps a little kindle alive i was at a friend's house last night um we, we go around on like a tuesday night to to play couch play games it's like the okay. ultimate chicken horse and mm. loads of like the um, <clears throat> tower fall ascension and that kind of thing you know um mount your friends rub it absolutely yeah. you know usually the lowest common denominator games but they're a lot of fun playing <laughs> with your mates you know um, yeah. and i walked in and him and another mate were playing overwatch and i've never never touched overwatch um it, it hasn't appealed to me it's, fps games haven't appealed to me really unless they're single player and they've got a good story um only because i went to i absolute did fps to death around the 90s yeah. i mean i played quake 2 almost every second of my life at one point it was all consuming and i, I just i just had enough of them and they're all very similar they've got slightly different mechanisms in them but other than that i, I don't get take much yeah. joy out of it anymore mm. yeah i can kind of i can get on board with that actually because i do like definitely do like to take a break from them um doing other games like two tycoon games and stuff like that mm. you know like really like micromanaging games and stuff like that um, i do enjoy that kind of stuff as well as first person shooters but i'd say like yeah the core for me was definitely first person shooters at first uh, but now you'll catch me playing like all kinds of stuff like Mordow and other random bits and bobs here and there. Yeah, but, Mordow yeah. is something I want to get my, my teeth into at some point. I haven't. I would, I really recommend that. I would recommend it. If it was in the Steam sale, I would have definitely got it. But it's just, it, I'm not playing, I won't, I won't have enough time right now to play it enough to pay what I'm going to pay for it. I think, I think I'm going to come to the next LAN Ops, so I'm going to get it before then and I'm thoroughly looking yeah. forward to it. Probably get my ass handed to me because everybody else has been playing it online, but... <laughs> It's the way of the um, world, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say it's, it's one of those games that, like, it's even sat at home, it's funny. But when mm. you're in a room full of people who are also sharing that same experience for you, it's even funnier because you're just sat behind the person that's like, you've just caved their head in or what have you. It's just brilliant, and it's just that atmosphere that comes along with it. It's really, really good. You used to have so much fun with medieval warfare. You know, it's same kind of thing, though, isn't it? I don't think I've ever come across that one. The only one I know well, of was Chivalry. Chivalry. Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Chivalry? Yeah, Chivalry, yeah. Medieval, uh, Wolf. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Same thing, but yeah, it's just right, a, yeah. it's kind of a spiritual successor to it, isn't it? It is. And I'm assuming yeah, there's a lot yeah, more exactly. in-depth in it. There's trebuchets and all kinds of other stuff, isn't there? In it? I think it there's... just ma makes more out of what's available. Like right. with um, with Chivalry, it, it was... It always kind of felt like a mod more than a game to me. Like it could have been a mod for something else. And I'm not sure what engine it was built on, but that's probably something to do with it. But mod how it does feel like it kind of takes the ball and just runs with it, which right. I'm totally fine with. Yeah, it's something some I definitely am very much looking forward to playing. Um, so, I mean, as I said, we're going to try and get to know each other a little bit more because we, we've been chatting for weeks about doing this podcast and we were, yeah. we were, con we were considering not doing Residence Arcade, we were considering doing a brand new podcast and we thought, right, you know, there's still some here, there's still assets involved and stuff. But we wanted to uh, kind of spend this show 
going over what we've been playing recently as well. Um, again, let's start off with Matt again. What, what have you been playing at the moment, or even in the last, say, a couple of months that you've been really enjoying? Um, well, for me, the, the biggest thing I've been playing this week is Mario Maker, just because it... <laughs> I was never massively into Mario, but like a few years ago, I um, I picked it up for the 3DS and it just kind of clicked for me after like years and years of playing about with it and just going like, oh yeah, that's kind of fun for five minutes. And it's, yeah, it, it kind of takes on a new life when you've got the actual making aspect of it. I mean, I've made a couple of levels myself, but it's just the community driven levels that I really enjoy because you know, you, you you kind of expect a certain standard of level when it's a professional designer doing it. But when people can just kind of take it and run with it, they come out with such incredible ideas and designs for how they think levels should be and such novel concepts. It's just it's it's just fun. You can play two levels, three levels, four levels, and all be completely different. See, I, that, my experience of playing community-driven levels um, on platformers specifically is that you play them and you're mm -hmm. punished from start mm -hmm. to end and that it's just you have to be brilliant at the game is mario maker like that because i haven't i haven't played it myself it i mean there's there's the option for it to be like that there's the i'm probably going to pronounce this wrong but the kaizo levels which are the like the, okay i really want to punish myself hurt me daddy kind of levels but then there's just there's a lot of other levels that are just fun that you know that it's like someone takes a concept of something or someone finds like a bit of a bug or an exploit and they can turn that into an entire level where it's just enjoyable you don't have to necessarily be the best person in the world at playing mario to enjoy it and to make the most of it fair enough so i've, I've been playing uh, ultimate chicken horse quite a bit recently and there's a uh, community levels on that as well but mm. i mean there's a, they're either extremely easy and you can get over them you know they just look pretty you know the the art yeah. And there's a start and an end and not much in between. Or they're impossible. And I mean I'm I'm pretty good at that game. You know, I'm I consistently usually win uh, when I'm playing with my friends. Don't know if I if I played with people who played it more regularly, I, I would win, but either way, it's I still I can't get past like the first few seconds of most levels that I play online. And it to me that I don't find that, that appealing personally, but I'd, I'd probably like to see some Mario Maker level. Is it Mario Maker 2 as well that's out? It, it is, sorry. Yeah. It's Mario Maker 2. I think with that type of game where you can make your own levels, though, it tends to be the, the given idea, doesn't it? It's just like, oh, cool, I can make my own level. I know, let's make it as hard as balls so nobody can do it, and I'll be at the top of the leaderboard for the hardest <laughs> difficulty. And if everybody has that same idea, then you just get a clump of the same types of levels at the top. And then, obviously, the more you play through a lot of them, the better stuff you'll kind of find. That's how I would approach a game like Mario Maker like that. I would try and make something ridiculous and then probably tone it down a bit. And, yeah, do, do deal with it that way. Does it come I mean, with anything the, out of the box? Any levels, you know, like yeah. Mario games? Yeah, it's got a full hundred levels that you can just play that have been built by Mario. So even if you even if you just want to use a Mario game, not built Ma by Mario. Mario himself built the games. Mario. Yeah. <laughs> with the help of Luigi and out. Peach. <laughs> he lives in Tokyo, a lovely guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, there's a hundred levels out of the box built by not Mario, presumably somebody else. Um, yeah, so it, it's got a nice little story mode to it, but I mean, that's basically just kind of there to for you to kind of play offline, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. The, the meat, the meat of the game is for me definitely the community side of it. What have they improved then with Mario Maker Two? I haven't. I, this is only second hand because I I never bought a Wii U just because I never right. thought I'd use it. But from what I can tell, it they've just they haven't changed too much. They've done bug fixes and things like that. But the majority of it is just it's they've not really messed about with the formula. They've just added more to it. So. Silly things that should have been in the first one, like slopes, like, oh, you can run <laughs> up a slope now. Um, and other things like, you know, it's just stuff to make the levels more interactive. Like there's on-off boxes that like they'll either turn on or turn off um, blocks. So it, right. just just little things like quality of life improvements, really. Right. So but, I'm, just, I'm not sure. I've got a Wii. Um, I've got a Switch. I, I want more games for the Switch as well, because I've only got a few. I've got the key, you know, the key ones that, Breath yeah. of the Wild and Mario. What was the last Mario Od game called? Odyssey. Yes, Odyssey. Yeah. Which I mean, I love them both, you know. Mm. Uh, and I've got a few downloadable, you know, indie games and that, but nothing, subs nothing else. Uh, and I'll be getting the next Zelda. I'll be, you know, I'm considering getting the Mario and Rabbit Rabbids. Yeah. Um, Turn-based game. 
XCOM for kids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I, I like all kinds of turn-based strategy games, so I think it looks yeah. like it'd be all right for me. Um, but I don't know if Mario Maker appeals to me. Maybe you should try and... Maybe you should use that as a... Trying to, trying to sell. So there's there's something else we're going to do later on in the show as well, which is a, a little competition that we're going to run, which is where each of us try and uh, sell a game that we the other two haven't played. I believe the first week, who did we say was going to do it? I think it was, Matt, it was oh, me. It was you, and, and it, it was, was Mario exactly. Maker 2 as well, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, which it is was. why I'm saving it for later now. Oh, all right, yeah, sorry. Should, <laughs> read the, re- should, should, should read the notes, really, shouldn't I? Even though we agreed all this last night. So, Dens, what any, what game have you been playing recently that you're, you're most enamored um, with? So, I mean, I, would, I was going to say one, I was going to say a particular game, and I'm thinking that probably <laughs> a night's experience with it is probably not enough. So, I'm going to go back a little bit further, and I'm going to say uh, a game called Squad, which, um, if you're not aware, is basically a military simulator effectively it's um but it's a bit so everyone whenever whenever you say the words military simulator i think i think people tend to focus on oh like armor and it's like kind of yeah but done better mm. like not as just all over the shop kind of thing um squad is a game that i keep picking up all the time uh, and every time i do pick it up i really enjoy it um purely because it's just hop into a lobby of i think it's 80 players by default 40 on each side And you have to communicate. You're actually given a position in a squad and you have a squad leader. And that squad leader tells you what to do. Mm -hmm. And he also has comms with other people in the same team. So it's like an actual, there's an actual hierarchy there of orders coming down from the top. All through voice chat. So if you don't have a mic, generally it's frowned upon. But if you do have a mic and something that I obviously like to do is get involved, it can actually be a a rather fun game, to be fair. Um, I do play it with a couple of people. Um... That are, that are already into mill sims and stuff like that and it's it's not everyone's cup of tea um but i do i just do like that like role-playing aspect that's not too serious um but at the same time will yield some pretty you know hilarious moments for people like you know charging into battle in a vehicle and just being like yeehaw or whatever just just that stuff like that can really yield some really great moments um plus the realism of that game is absolutely insane um if you've got a good pair of headphones on you and you're playing that game and you've not touched the audio settings at all um anybody would think that you actually have had an ak-47 shot by a right ear if something goes off it's really that kind of that kind of realism to it um but i yeah really enjoy that game quite a lot and keep picking it back up it's not new it's I think it was released around 2015, but it's in alpha, so they continually drop updates for it. Um, but they actually are continually working on it, and there's a really, really big community behind the game. So that's also something that's beneficial as well, is obviously because there's a community pushing ideas forward, the devs respond, and it, things get done, basically. It's not sort of one of the games that's been left to go stale, as it were. So that's why, yeah, I'm really enjoying Squad at the minute. It sounds like something I'd actually really like. I, I've had a problem. Um, did you ever play Mag? It was a PlayStation 3 uh, game. I never had a PlayStation 3, but okay. I've heard of Mag, I believe. I remember Mag. Mag, the, the, the novel title of massive action game. <laughs> this, <laughs> brilliant. I mean, the, the, I just read an interview, um, a, a retrospective interview in PlayStation magazine um, that said that Mag was a... Uh, they, come, they used the title so they could portray what it was about. That was it. They just used it because it was the most <laughs> simple thing that they could come up with. But... Um, the, the, that had a hierarchy in it, but you didn't have comms in that way. So you could every it was just chaos. You know, it was it was like two hundred and fifty six people all fighting at once in a, a massive battlefield. It took you twenty five minutes. It's like you know, like in Battlefield where you you take five minutes, two couple of minutes to run to the front line if you re- yeah. respawn. It's not like that. It takes you twenty five thirty minutes to get to the front line, and then once you get there, you die, and then you have to do it all yeah. over again if you're not good Pinter at it. Repeat. You know? And th- yeah, th- I mean that's. Ex- Go on, sorry. I was, I was, sorry, I was going to say, it's, that's, that was the lack of communication in that game where there was a hierarchy and those platoons and squads and all that kind of stuff. It just didn't work. It, it wasn't wasn't that solid, but it sounds like yeah. that would be. Yeah, squad really works really quite well. Um, so per squad, I believe there's something like, I think there's like, uh, eight slots in a squad so you're not if you're a squad leader which takes a lot of guts to be fair it's not that big of a, a squad to manage but then you've also got to be talking to the other squads and organizing things but in the same way that you said it's 25 minutes to the front line the same thing happens in squad if you've not got like a, a fallout uh, a forward operating base or 
what's called a rally point nearby you spawn back where right at the end of the map you know where your main base is and you've got to either hitch a lift or you're walking like a good 25 minutes to get to the front line so don't mess it up basically is the point um but yeah really really good game the comms make it basically i think it's one of those and it's a steam game it's a steam game yeah um it's off it re- relatively often goes on sale um it's i think by def- default it's like a 30 pound game but it often goes down to about 20 pound mark but it's really really worth it if it goes on sale for cheap um it's one of those games where you can play it with friends but it's also just as fun to hop into a random server and just see who you get as a squad leader um and you just have fun with it really yeah. what's the learning curve like um I would say the learning curve is it's it's not easy. There are some aspects of the game that if you're hopping in there as a complete newbie there's, and a squad leader asks you to oh, do a logi run, which is a logistics run. Right. Um, it basically, we'll yeah, it's like, ships, that type of game. Arms. So go and get, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go and get the <laughs> materials required for building a base somewhere out in the in, in the field, effectively. Um, so if you don't know how to do that, and you sort of have to pipe up and say, squad leader kind of don't know how to do a logic run. It's just like, oh, just go and get the truck, go over here, press this button, and it kind of gets a bit annoying for them. So there, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not too difficult. Um, there are some aspects of it that are more difficult, like you can actually be a mortar squad if you want, and you've got to get the milleradians right and actually plan where your mortars are going to drop. And if you drop it in the wrong place, you're going to kill your own squads and that kind of stuff. It's It's funny like that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a learning curve to it, but to just jump in and shoot things, not that much, yeah, to be yeah. fair. Quite quite easy, but often... like diff- What's that phrase? It's like uh, difficult to master, basically, yeah. It's like easy oh, to play, difficult easy, to master. Easy to, yeah, easy to pick up, yeah. difficult to master. I, exactly. I, It sounds right on my street. I mean, that's what I miss from first-person shooters. I was a, a big fan of Tribes back in the day because um, oh, there was yeah. a lot more involvement in, in it and there was a lot more it's not as detailed as that it's not a simulator but there was a lot more depth to it and then people would argue things like overwatch there's depth to all the characters and all the different classes and stuff but to me it's still jump into a match do a quick 20 minute round or whatever kill yeah. a load of people move forward a little bit or whatever you know depending on the, the game mode and then that's it i want yeah. more investment in my games yeah I'm yeah 38 for that. 37 yeah. for god's sake i need to <laughs> i need a bit more yeah. uh, engagement um so i suppose um i'll talk about a game i played recently which uh, is uh, one I'm, i've got totally addicted to again um now last time i did resonance arcade i wasn't quite as heavily into my survival games as i am now that is now what i play almost exclusively and i it, I put it down to loving camping as a kid. That's the only reason that I can figure out why. I, <laughs> I used to, my dad used to take me up to Scotland and do rough camping, and he had to fish for his food and make you know get bloody firewood from the from the beach in order to survive. Um, still went to the community centre for the toilet, like. But, um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, but I, I I'm really into my survival games, but I'm also into my co- colony and kind of builder games, and you know my tycoons and my god games, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But kind of sitting in somewhere in between that is is this beautiful little gem that I I like to play called Stardew Valley, and I've been I've got addicted to it if, about the beginning of this week again or the beginning of last week. There was some updates, and I wanted to have a check them out. I went onto my farm that I'd created a couple of years ago, and it was huge like full screen full of shit going on you know I'd, i couldn't i couldn't even remember any of the systems involved let alone what i needed to put in every different machine and what my cows were spitting out and all. it again not a thing for everybody but i am utterly addicted to it have you have, have you both you must have both heard of that game at least i've heard of stardew valley before a yeah um, times yeah. yeah yeah it's not one i've actually ever picked up to be fair i think Mainly the, I don't know if it's just a top-down thing for me. I mean, I suppose it's it's one of those games that I'd have to let it grow on me, if you get me. Mm. Uh, but that's the thing with games. I don't tend to give them a chance in the first instance. But now that you've mentioned that there's like systems involved, kind of sounds a bit more interesting. You can that. view it. You could also view it as grindy as well. Um, okay. So say, for example, right, you start off. Um, I mean, on my second, on my first game, I'm in year two. You've got seasons in the game, and you've got like 28 days per season. Each day has a set period, and if you don't go to bed by 2 o'clock in the morning, you fall asleep wherever you're standing, basically, and then you get charged to 
be taken back home. There's very little peril in it. There's like some mines that you can go and mine in and kill some things, and then later on in the game, there's more advanced places to go. Uh, but it's a, there's a lot of shit going on. Like every there's things like you have to develop relationships with all the villagers, and you you have to. Um, manage your different crops like you start off and you have to manually go around and water every single pixel like every yep. single square of your farm and then you get upgrade your watering can and you can do three at a time then you can do five at a time then you can do nine at a time and then and then you get automatic sprinklers and they get bigger and bigger and bigger later on in the game they okay. very much might might be tractors and shit like that i don't know i haven't got that far in it but i've played it for hours i mean hundreds of hours probably <laughs> but it's one of them that you can go back to and yeah. it's great. It's a, I would say it's a great doctor's office thing. But the problem is, you know, like if you're waiting to do something or whatever, the problem is, is that you can't save. So it's not really a casual game. You can't just come out of it. You can't quit because if if you don't uh, wait until the end of the day when you go to bed, it doesn't save, and you don't you lose all your progress for that day. And you might have done tons of things. So. An entire day might be 20, 30 minutes, depending on how many times you pause and how many times you do other things. Um, but you have to manage things like your energy. So if you, this is what I mean about the systems, you have to manage like uh, when you're chopping trees down, it uses energy. When you're milking cows, it uses energy. But you, that builds up over time as well. It's really, really intricate, and but it's very laid back mm. as well. Okay, so it's not like, is it one of those games where you have to like look up like wikis for like certain things to find out how they work or does it kind of explain it enough in inside the game or um you get to a point where you want to look things up in the wiki and okay. the wiki's huge um okay just for example i've I've always on one of my screens i've always got the calendar <laughs> up because every day when you wake up it's like seventh of fall or something and it might be Lawrence's birthday so if you give him a gift on his birthday that particular day you get better friendship points and then when they get to certain friend it's not just about friendship I know I've mentioned that quite a lot the relationships but um you get different events that occur depending on how friendly you are with them and it's it's I haven't seen anywhere near all of the content there's so much stuff okay. going on in it but uh, there's a continual thing where you have to rebuild like the community center and rebuilding the community center is collecting little collecting items from doing various different tasks and stuff i can i can totally see how people might see it as a boring grindy game but there's something really therapeutic to me as well i i really enjoy just jumping into it doing a day at lunchtime or something you know and then saving it or spending an entire eight hours of a day playing it you know because it, it's just addictive yeah. it's got that Quickly addictive one more it. one more day to you know of, that kind of civilization one more turn thing i can totally get that especially if it's 20 minutes half an hour a day and you get to think oh well the day's started now so i might as well do something with my day and then before you know it it's 3 a.m before you know it, it's the end of summer yeah <laughs> or a re real time end no, of well, summer <laughs> in the game and probably real time as well yeah um well, but, uh, yeah be christmas <laughs> that, that is pretty much yeah. exclusively what i'm playing at the moment but i'm also playing lots of other survival games i'm always trying new things out and there's been the steam sale as well so there's lots of lots yeah, of things going on. There. Did you guys get anything in the Steam sale? I picked up a couple of things, but it was mainly just just sort of small casual games I could play. So I picked up um, Polybridge, which is a fantastic game because I'm studying engineering. If I play that, I can pretend that I'm studying because I'm like <laughs> I'm building bridges. It's what I'm supposed to be doing. Is it like Bridget? <laughs> have you, Bridget, it's uh, like a bridge game. You build bridges and then send a train over it. Yeah, it's, it's basically the setup. You build a bridge and then you've got to send a car over or there's like uh, pneumatic things that happen as well. So there might be there might be like um, boats sailing underneath. So there's, there's a lot of different kind of little scenarios. But it's just it's just a nice, fun game. But for the same things, you can pick it up and play it for like five minutes, ten minutes, have a couple of goes at it and then put it down. So I, I picked that up and um, Plague Inc. as well. I'm, oh, I'm brilliant! Ink. The full I version. I, that. I was playing that on um, uh, on my mobile for ages. Play game, yeah. and the, the full version, the full Steam version. I grabbed it in last year's sale. I think it was only a couple of quid. It's much, much better. It is miles oh, better than so the casual game. Did they? I because I had it on iOS back when I had like an iPad and an iPhone. Now they actually added more content to it on the PC version, or is it yeah. very much the same? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, the it's, a same, it. oh, wow. it's the same concept, but it's it yeah. is loads more content. There's loads more modes. Uh, okay. I mean, I, again, because I played it so much in the casual on the casual 
mobile version. I haven't put that much time into it on the PC, but it's still one that I look at occasionally and go, oh, oh I put that on my favourites list and I'll try and remember to play it again. Mm. There's loads of it's, stuff there. Uh, is Greenland still hard to infect as it always was, or is it uh, a little bit easier this time around? Have you, have you tried starting in Greenland? Are. Uh, yeah, I think it works better. No, I don't. I can't remember. <laughs> to be fair, it's that long ago. Get, but like, first yeah. thing, get your boats upgraded. I'm telling you, get your boats upgraded <laughs> and and your avian stuff so you can infect the entire of Europe. And oh, there's some about your destruction pigeons. that I love, destroying the human race. I think I for me, to... it's just picking the names and just seeing. That was like... us. <laughs> I was going to say it's the like, names. Well, Pro Winfrey is about to destroy humanity. Like, how is Murray? <laughs> Yeah, that's a brilliant one. Yeah, I'm so, I'm sorry, but I'm I'm puerile in that most of the names that I use in in computer games are Stardew Valley, for example. I've got my main character's called Mister McFarm Tits. Um, my <laughs> my dog is called Wanky, and my farm is called <laughs> Bell End Farm. <laughs> nice. What do you grow there? I'm sorry, I am 38 years, 37. Why am I 38? What is wrong with me? 37 years old. <laughs> You have to have a big sticker on your monitor. Thirty-seven. <laughs> I am um, this old. My favourite is when I have to I name a in um, in uh, Legend of Zelda games. It's I'm not even going to repeat some of the things that the characters come out with when I with the names that I use. But yeah, I've got some screenshots on my Twitter. I think. <laughs> I, I had yeah, a I lot of fun doing that, that with um, Final Fantasy VIII. I, I played through it quite a few times, and the last time I played it, which was probably about four or five years ago, I. Yeah, I dare not speak the names I gave to like the summons and things like that, but it just works so well. And the, the only bad part was I was trying to play it on a plane and I was constantly worried, like, is someone going to look over my shoulder and think, what the fuck is that guy doing? <laughs> There's nothing to be worried about there. It sparks a conversation. It's the icebreaker. <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to do that for Dark Souls and quite often give, like, just try and come up with a funny, not necessarily like, vile rude or whatever just something funny like mm. to just name your characters and just when you're playing online with people just knowing that they, they they're seeing that and it's it's like a like i hope you enjoy the name kind of thing if it's um, if it's an online game i'm you know i use sensible names i'm not i'm not a troll or anything i don't go around to upset people and all that stuff but on my own it just makes me laugh i'm sorry yeah I can't i can't help it did you get anything in the steam sale then dens um, yeah, I got one game which I was going to use as the one that I'd been playing recently, but as I said, not really got that much experience with it. But it was the Death, uh, Space Hulk Deathwing game, which mm. is a Warhammer game. And I've not picked up a Warhammer game since... I think that actually, yeah, the last one would have been Dawn of War. Mm. Um, prior to that would have been Fire Warrior. And there are a few good ones that are out there. It's just finding them and having them on sale. Because they're Games Workshop licensed material, they're often quite expensive and stay that way. And it's a bit of a, a push to try and think, is it worth it? But I mean, I've been playing it with uh, with Thorno recently because he picked it up as well. Um, first impressions after a couple of hours playing it, it's hard. Um, lots lots of teamwork involved. I can see it being a really really good game for for actually getting like a few people on and actually playing the roles as they're supposed to be played properly. Um, but with just the two of us, we were getting stomped pretty much all night, not able to get very far. But I mean, from what I played of it, it is actually quite an enjoyable game. You basically get to play a Terminator from the Space Marines, which is brilliant. So it's like the original Space Hulk that was, you know, that, that was on that. In fact, it was on the Panasonic 3DO, believe it or not. Oh, <laughs> That's where I first picked that game up. So yeah, um, cheap and cheerful. I think it was only a tenner, so not too bad, yeah. I got all of the Dawn of War, Warhammer, uh, all the expansions, apps, oh. everything. I might even have got um, Space Hulk, the original Space Hulk, on mm. last year's sale, and I still haven't played any of them. I've played Dawn of War all the way through, but I haven't played any of the expansions. I played that. I got oh. it I, when it first came out. I got it on. Uh, I got it on CD. <laughs> got it on <laughs> Beta Max. Oh, jewel <laughs> case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could talk about Dawn of War all day. That is probably one of my fondest games that I have ever played, just purely because I love the base building on it and just congregating them. Like, the AI could be doing whatever they wanted. Yeah, go and capture that rally point or whatever. I'm building a massive army that's going to stomp on everybody on <laughs> the map. But you could just literally yeah. highlight everything, click a button, <laughs> dead. <Move. laughs> you don't need to manage yeah. any of it. See, well, I've been, I was watching... Um, 
I've forgotten the name of it, but it's it's quite a niche um, real time strategy. And there was some esports stuff going on last time I was doing Resonance Arcade, cup quite a few years back now. And there was someone that watched the show who was really really into this this game. And I watched some of the esports matches. The commentators were brilliant, by the way, much more interesting than the football or anything like that. It was, yeah, like they made it engaging. But they were talking about individual units and. To me, an RTS is literally select all click. You know that that's that's the level of my expertise with it. To an extent, you know, I do, do a little bit more micromanaging. Yeah. But if I was, I was talking to somebody about RTSs the other day, and I think it basically there are two levels to it. And there? there's like the people who like to pick up an RTS and play it through, and just like yeah, highlight all the units and whatever. Then there are people who actually have like keyboard extensions with macros set up specifically for the roles yeah. of a particular unit, a skill, an ability, whatever it might be. And I can't comprehend how people keep a track of the individual units. It's just to me, I would never be able to. Do. I don't even think practice would help if I was honest. It just, it's just too much to keep a track of. Uh, Again, I un- to, sorry, it's, it's the ability to juggle that many things and that many individual units. And you look at them, and like honestly, looking at them, it's like they're playing Guitar Hero, but just on a keyboard. <laughs> they are all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it is another level. I can understand the systems that they use, but I just don't. I don't think. I, to me, that's uh, someone who's who's taking it professionally almost to the you know it's not just enjoyment anymore to me well it isn't when you're yeah. looking at esports is it all the time no it's i'm well past, past that, that. well past that um right so games we're looking forward to let's move on i know we've, we've not covered anywhere near all of the games that we've been playing that we've we've listed but games we're looking forward to i think there's some common ground here as well i think a lot of us i mean for example i'm looking forward to cyberpunk 2077 yeah big time that's probably <laughs> number is. one on my list and it has been yeah, since fine. its very first announcement mainly because i'm a big fan at, and i'll get some stick from this off the internet because they've had some controversy um but i'm a i'm a big fan of cd project red uh, and their service to fans in general um but also i haven't played the tabletop game the cyberpunk but i'm very into that kind of world i mean Deus Ex is my, probably my favourite PC franchise of all time. I've loved every single one of them. There's been some janky bits, but generally loved most of it. But this, I, I try not to watch spoilers either, so I don't know that much about it. I just know that I want it now, and I want yeah. to <laughs> immerse myself in it for the rest of my life. <laughs> it does That's... look like an achievement. Like The entire game just looks so fleshed out. And I, I mean, I, I've only, my experience with... Uh, CD Projekt Red is pretty much playing, trying to play The Witcher 3 a few times, but I can tell the level of detail and just how careful they are with everything they do. It's going to be great. I, I, I've no doubt at all that it's going to be great. And mu- much like you, I, I was a big fan of... Um, I, I kind of missed out on the first couple of Deus Ex games, but when it was Human Revolution, was it, that came out Few years that was ago. recent that was recent yeah i was gonna say that's it, it was, was it human, human revolutions then, um the, and then mankind divided came yeah, out the first yeah the first one that the, the first new one and it's yeah. quite old now when you look at it as well it's dated pretty yeah. pretty badly um, consider it's not that old but it's still brilliant still a brilliant game oh yeah you've never played the original one I've tried to play through it a couple of times and it's, I don't know whether it's just a case of it's aged. I, I I didn't get it at the time and now it's perhaps a touch too old for me, but I, I keep meaning to go back because I know there's so many mods that overhaul everything and just make it much more playable today. There's a, there's this one mod especially, um, it could be a, an actual full release. I can't remember. I've got it. Um, and it's a, it's a total kind of, it's not a total conversion, but it, it totally, it makes the world a it creates a lot more stuff in the world, basically. So instead of one box, cardboard box in the corner, there's 500 of them. You know, it's, it, it's, I'm making it sound more simple than it is, but there's a boat on the, uh, on the dock at the beginning, you know, that's not there in the actual original game. And it, it is better. And yeah. then they've got some HD textures and things like that, but it's still a blocky piece of crap when you look at it but it's still it's still deus ex and it still holds it's a nostalgic thing to me now i tried yeah. to play the hd version or the, the remake version 
as much as I wanted to play through it, I just thought it, all I'm getting is extra bits. I'm, I've played it so many times through, you know, I, I know it off by heart, so I'm not going to get that much out of it. Is it worth my time right now? But it's like Black Mesa, you know. I played halfway yeah. through quite a few times. Should I bother really playing all the way through it? <clears throat> no, I completely get that. I mean, for, I think for me, I've always enjoyed the whole kind of aesthetic and the idea of the you know, not getting too deep into it, but the, the kind of transhumanism thing with the, like, where does technology start and humans stop? I've, I've always found that quite interesting, you know, like any sort of media, TV, film, books, I, I just, I really do find it interesting. I thought Deus Ex did, a, well, the uh, Human Revolution did a really good job of kind of bringing that, modernizing that with a great story. And I think Cyberpunk's only just going to, it's just going to run away with it completely. Absolutely. So you didn't say much then, Danny. Are you are you not looking? Yeah, I mean, to I've I am I am, but purely I've not like when everybody was going on about cyberpunk, I kind of distanced myself from it because I knew that cyberpunk, the, the the term in itself is exciting to me, like that kind of. Do you know what I mean? And I was just like, right, okay, I can tell what type of game it's going to be. I'm, I already know what the aesthetic's going to be just purely from knowing what the name is. And I was just like, I'm just going to distance myself, not watch anything on it. And I tell you what, when it comes here, I'll buy it and then just experiences it as if I'd never picked up a game before. And I think that's going to be my approach to it, because I've done this with a lot of games now where you, you you do your research into it, you keep it up to date with like the latest posts from the dev blog or whatever, and you just kind of like, oh, I kind of ruined it for myself. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, but I just literally just got a tab open on, you know, just, just a couple of Google images, and it sort of reminds me a little bit of, um, and I, this is going away from games, but a little bit like Altered Carbon from uh, the oh, Netflix series. I recently watched that, kind of. That's real. I really enjoyed that, and it kind of like similarities between it. And if I enjoyed all the carbon, I know I'm going to enjoy Cyberpunk. So yeah, I am excited for it. I just don't have enough information on it to sort of like continually talk about, you know, what's going on with it. But neither do Matt yeah, and I. We're just we're just fanboying, just <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, you're talking yeah, about CG product Red and stuff. I've not really. I don't think I've actually played any games from that developer. Um, I've not played The Witcher certainly, and I don't think I've played any of Deus Ex games. So well, Deus Ex isn't um, CD Project Red. That's is it I on Storm originally, and then EA IDOS. or EDOS. Was it EDOS who took over? It EDOS or IDOS? IDOS. Yeah. I always I, say things wrong. So. That yeah. other one. Yeah, I, I on Storm <laughs> were um, a developer. They they created the legendary Daikatana as well, which was oh yes, John Romero was it? Yes, John Romero. But it wasn't actually John Romero's part of I on Storm that did it. It was another uh, that did the uh, Deus Ex. It was. I forget his name every time, um, but it was a it was another department in another city that did it because they basically said, "Here you go, create your perfect game. We'll give you sign off and we'll let you use our name type thing and our budget and stuff." And it was pretty much one of their only IO Storm's only successes, but it was mm. a major success. And it was you know the guys who cre created Quake Two and Doom and all that other stuff, or at least one of them anyway. Um, right, I think we should move on. Actually, we, again, we could talk about games that we want to play and have played all day but we'll, we've got plenty more episodes to do that um <laughs> so we're going to do our um competition which is video game merchant we've decided to call it <laughs> working title of course where uh, we'll try we'll try and do better i promise um so this is where we are going to or one of us um in this instance it's going to be matt is going to try and sell a game to us he's already done a little bit earlier on in the show um and every week we're gonna he's gonna we're gonna basically say yeah I'll play that or no I wouldn't play that and we'll see where it goes and whoever's got the most points in I don't know ten episodes in a year whatever we don't care we're not keeping score really um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, we'll win something I'll um, I'll, I'll pick some around out, the room pick, calculate I'll, I'll pick some out of my pile over there <laughs> brilliant <laughs> so Matt your game. So I, I wish it was my game. The amount of money it's made, and if it's making super money, money maker, super money maker two, shake your money maker edition. So basically, yeah, like I was saying in the start, it's Mario. He's been around for thirty years. Give me your money. All right. Well, I need a bit more information. That I love Mario. I was a Nintendo boy as a kid. I, that that was. I was brought up on a NES. I got a SNES. I got N sixty four. I still go back to Super Mario World as on the SNES with great affection and it's one of the few games that i do go back to and restart over and over again and just play through the levels because i just enjoy it it's a brilliant game um 
but what's different about Super Mario Maker? Why would I, as a Nintendo, as a Mario fan, want to play it? Well, I mean, to me, it seems like it's got such a nice balance of everything. It's got it's got the Nintendo design levels, so it's got the classic kind of gameplay you would expect from a Mario game, but it's just got as much else as you can possibly fit into it. There's so many interesting creations out there and just like everything about it, like the aesthetic of it, the gameplay style of it, everything has just been tweaked to be right, to just feel like Mario, even though it's not a course that's been made by, well, not by Mario. We've already established he doesn't make the courses. Well, the big but, Toad do it. Cracking yeah, exactly. the whip. <laughs> little bastard. <laughs> It's yeah. It just it gives people the opportunity to to be in that level design seat, and it just makes everything that they create feel like an extension of the game. You know, ev- everything is so so nicely tuned. Like even the aesthetic of it, you can choose whether you want it to be original NES Snooper, uh, Snooper Super Mario, or if you want it to be all the way up to Super. I forget what the I think it's Super Mario World, where it's like a, a jet, like an actual three D look and like they've they've start introducing new gameplay styles and things like that so basically i think there's four or five different styles of mario you can choose and it comes with all the different move sets and the pitfalls and like the you know the speed you run the height you jump everything is correct to that era so people can be as creative as they want with within that era if you wanted to do original mario you can do original mario if you want to have mario in a go-kart smashing through thwomps you can do that so you can do 3D and the isometric stuff as well, or does it? No, it's it's more like the 3DS style 3D, where it's it's well, it's like 2.5D, I think they call it. So okay. it's it's like the the models are 3D, but it's still the same 2D platform ex- experience. Because I was thinking there, like Super Mario Sunshine 3D, where you've actually got like a you know a full that map to go and explore. A nightmare to build levels. For. <laughs> so you've you've heard of um, Media Molecule and and their kind of games, the um, Sackboy. What was he called? Some oh, world. Little Big Planet. Little Big little Planet. Big Planet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got both of them games. I don't know if there was more than two, but I got one. My wife got me one second. Um, the second one, and I've not even put it into my PlayStation. <laughs> and the first one I got and kind of got a bit bored of it because I was just like. Oh, creating a level so much hard work i'm not getting that much joy out of this can i play it without having to create levels can it, it, yeah is there still a lot of enjoyment there or yeah definitely i mean just there's there's a level browser for the user created content so you've got you know it lists it by like hot so it, i suppose in a way it's kind of like reddit you've got the hot section which is kind of newer stuff that people have played and they say like giving likes and saying oh this is good then you've got like the top section where it's just top rated stuff where you've got some really genuinely good levels with some interesting things going on there's quite a few speed run levels but when not in the way you think of like oh i've got to be super precise and everything else they're just more like run as fast as you can hit a few boxes at the right time but they're still fun to watch like even when you're playing it it makes you feel like wow i'm really good at this game when actually the game's kind of playing itself and you're just holding down a couple of buttons but it just the amount of content there there is something for everyone and i i'm I'm surprised myself how much i've enjoyed this i I basically bought it on a bit of a whim because one of my friends was saying I'm, i'm looking forward to it and honestly i've played it more than anything else this week it really has just kind of captured my interest. How much was it? Forty pounds. So That's... I mean, historically, Nintendo games are quite expensive, or they stay yeah. expensive as well. They don't really go down in price, um, I, you know, until, until even even in fact, even retro games have cost an absolute fortune to get Zelda oh, yeah. and, and and Mario and stuff. That's the only thing that puts me off. I'm not. I don't feel like I can get forty pounds worth of of value out of it. Because I'm not creating the levels, I'm not the yeah. maker side. I'm the Mario side. Because I don't, I've done that. I said I've, I used to create Quake Two levels and stuff back in the day, and I've, I've tried it in quite a few things. Create my own bloody computer games for God's sake in Unity Three D and that. But mm, there's a lot of work involved in that. I, am I gonna? Am I gonna do that? But the question is, my wife gonna is, do that? She, ah, might, she might play it. Out, outsource it. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> A game that makes itself. Well, not makes itself, but plays you know. itself, makes itself. What's the point? Brilliant. <laughs> Nintendo are onto something here. Genius. I could call it something else, like a mo- mo- movie, because it moves for its. I don't know. 
But there's there's just, I mean, you don't have to make the, your own levels. It's the option to make your own levels. It's like a, another example for me is um, the game, the Flash game, oh, what's it called? Happy Wheels. I don't know if either of you two have ever played Yes, that. I've played Happy Wheels I before. So. That is but, atrocious of it. <laughs> so in, in a kind of quick rundown that, basically it's a Flash game, you pick a character or you have a choice of characters and everything, most levels are user generated again, but it's it's just a very stupid game. Like everything about it is stupid. Like your players, like say you pick the guy who's like a, a guy on a bike with his son in the back in like a little, you know, like the little holster for children. I don't know what they call it, a car seat, yeah. but not yeah, on a seat. car. Bike seat. seat. Yeah. There's like a guy in a wheelchair and stuff like that. And, yeah. yeah. So, so you pick the game up, you think, okay, what's going on? So you start going down the road and then out of nowhere, something will smash into you at a hundred miles an hour and you will just explode into red chunks. <laughs> And you're not mad because you're like, I did not expect that. This is great. Well, he's ruined it for me now. <laughs> oh, oh, don't worry. It's fascinating how many different ways people can think to make you explode into red junks. What's it called again? Happy Wheels. I'm selling the wrong game. <laughs> I'm playing that. You could have used that this week. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Sounds I mean, fascinating. It's, I'm quickly it's, I, I started playing it when I was in high school, so that's like... Well, yeah, it's quite an oldie. I, I can't remember how many years ago it was it came out. 2010 was the initial like, release date. 2010, and I yeah. still go back to it now. It's the sort of game where it'll be like 2 o'clock in the morning at LAN. I'm quite drunk, and I think, <laughs> do you know what I could really go for? Happy Wheels. <laughs> yeah. And then five minutes later, I'm smashing an old man in a wheelchair into the side of a cliff face and pissing myself laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, I, uh, yeah. Dear. Right. I I'm I'm I I'd have to give you half a point from my side, considering there's one whole point on offer here. I, that okay. I I'm not sure I, I would buy it, but the only reason I'd give you half a point is because I need more games for my Switch, mm. and it's a Mario game, and they've consistently been fairly good, but I've never tried to make a Mario Maker game. So that's, that's fair. Half a that's point. Fair. Okay. What about you, Dent? I have more questions. Oh, two, in fact. Um, is it only available for the Switch, or is it it's, available for other consoles? It's it is only it? available for the Switch at the moment. Okay, and I'm assuming when you're playing these levels that people make, is it uh, just you on your own? You can't do like a multiplayer type thing with other people at the same time. It's more of a play level, put it down, get another user generated level, play it yourself, and then that kind of rinse and repeat cycle. No, there is multiplayer, which is something All I right. probably should have mentioned in my sales pitch. There is, there <laughs> okay. is multiplayer um, where basically you're racing against somebody else on the same map. The only issue with that at the moment is, you know, to be completely honest, you can't play with friends at the moment, which is a weird, weird oversight. I read something about that. Yeah, you, you can you can play with randoms, but you can't lobby up with your friends. In fact, yeah. it was Boogie289 Summit or whatever, the YouTuber, he he, he said that, yeah. It's it's a weird design choice, but because you know people were understandably confused and outraged because everything outrages everybody on the internet. Mm. Yeah, they're going to add it, so just sit tight and you'll be able to play with your friends soon enough. Okay, yeah. so they're adding it. So under the provider they add it, I think I would actually probably purchase Mario Maker. And you get a Switch for that as well. And I think I get a Switch for that, yeah, because the Switch is. <laughs> The Switch isn't really like part of it because I can get other games for the Switch. It's just a means to play Mario Maker. Like I would get Mario Maker if I had a Switch. I should probably say and clarify. I mean, just jumping off the back of that, there are there is quite a lot on the Switch. You know, the um, particularly stuff like the indie games on Switch are just great. Like I I had so much fun playing through Celeste last year on the Switch. I, I didn't put it down for a week. <laughs> is that the horror game? Celeste. I'm thinking of something totally different. Um, you might be thinking of something different. Celeste is like the um, quite difficult platforming game where you basically, the, the whole point is you're climbing up a mountain and it's kind of the story that unfolds around that. It's genuinely, it's one of those games that's challenging, but like you don't get mad at it because you know that you it's you that's made a mistake. It's not the game that's done anything cheap to kill you. Yeah, uh, you know the the whole the whole like Dark Souls excuse people give is like you know it's <laughs> it's challenging but it's fair. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know where you're coming from with that. I said go back to Spelunky for example. I've been playing that a lot recently. 
you have to be good at it in order to get but it's so it doesn't frustrate me but it's so so hard to get past like <laughs> level one four for god's sake you know um but again there'll be people watching this who go you fucking noobs <laughs> <laughs> yeah <Get> good <laughs> Yeah, get casual. <laughs> so, 1.5 points then. The multiplayer might have nudged it up, but I'd already allocated my points, you see. So I can't. Uh, I can't. See, that's a problem. It's getting pitch. It yeah, is, I need to get it all in there in the pitch. Get in and get out. I am the puppy of Wall Street. One day I'll be a wolf. <laughs> so next week we'll have, I think, Dens has to come up with a game. And, uh, yeah, I do. Try and sell it to us. Uh, we will know what game it is beforehand, but we're not going to do because just so we know that we haven't played it, because that's the main concept yeah. here is that we need to I not suggest, play it. Yeah, exactly. Because you can suggest like Call of Duty, and everyone's just like, "Well, I wouldn't buy that." What are you talking about? No matter what. So yeah, <laughs> kind of that that side to it. But, yeah. Um, right. So on to the next section. We're running slightly behind, but it is our first show, so you have to give us a little bit of a, a break here. Uh, this is, again, working title, and this is Matt's fault this time, this this working title. Uh, and this is our hardware section, so this is Hardware Hot Pants. Do -do 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 -do. I <laughs> will have some Hardware Hot Pants constructed for the next stream, so don't worry about that, guys. <laughs> and Matt's so leading, so what do you want to talk about? Um, basically, just we've had quite a lot going on hardware wise. We won't keep it, we won't go too in depth on it, but just there's been quite a few things that, particularly for PC games, are quite exciting this week. We've had a bit of a war between AMD and anyone else that could have a war with, which has been quite interesting. <laughs> You know the the drop <laughs> the dropping CPUs that are five hundred dollars well five hundred dollars I think about four seventy pounds and they are just insane for the performance right. they are absolutely incredible sixteen correct me if I'm wrong Dan is it sixteen thread eight core four point something gigahertz uh, that's are you talking about the top of the top the well the for now the top of the top the thirty nine hundred X yeah uh, six yeah eight core six no actually. Oh, the the 3950s 24 thread 12 core, but that doesn't come out till September, I don't think. Right, okay. I wasn't aware that the ah, that's the Ryzen 9 series, but I think yeah. you're talking about the Ryzen 7 stuff. Yeah, yeah. then it's eight core 16 threads. Yeah. Um but up to um yeah, pretty high clock speeds on there. Um and IPC on single core performance is looking just slightly behind Intel, which is biggest, you know, the biggest news for AMD in a long time because they've always struggled with that. Um They've been quite good at multi-core, haven't they, AMD, for quite mm. a while. But it, it's never really mattered a lot, um, especially for like high refresh rates and stuff. It's always about that single core uh, IPC that you get. But yeah, I mean, I'm re I'm really excited just to see AMD basically bringing it to Intel again. Just so, you know, it's better for the consumer, isn't it, at the end exactly. of the day? Everybody gets better prices for it, so... Yeah. See, really I'm still of the I'm still of the, the camp that's AMD's not... It just doesn't... It's not stable enough. And you're going to tell me off for this, hopefully. <laughs> Where does the thing of it not stable enough come from there? Well, owning like, two AMDs of... back, back in the 90s and them crashing and blue screening every five seconds. That's... I mean, <laughs> that's... The 90s, I know. That's 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 being jaded, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's holding a grudge, actually. <laughs> that is, yeah. I'm, but, I'm a bit I mean... of an Intel snob, I think. I, I get Do that completely. Think... Like, I, I've used Intel, like, every processor I've bought for i don't know how long i've used intel but honestly for the, the price to performance it, it even if you don't like amd intel have already started dropping the prices so it doesn't matter everybody everybody wins from this yeah, well no you're right something better. Uh, and yeah. it's you know it's the same argument with things like the epic store versus valve that even though we don't i say we i don't know what your opinions are on it we will do probably a show on it but you know a lot of uh, serious gamers don't like the Epic Store, but it's going to change how Valve do things, no matter yeah. how we look at it, because it's making yeah. an impact so far. Sorry. It's always the same, isn't it? It's always somebody's the king because somebody has to be king. And when a fight for the crown occurs, things change. And that's might be, you know, generally is for the better. But yeah, people obviously don't tend to like that very much. Um, especially when you get the AMD fanboys and the Intel fanboys when the Intels are like, nah, they're still rubbish. And you get the AMD <laughs> fanboys thinking, we're coming for you kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but I mean, like, in terms of the Intels, like, yeah, I mean, I've used both. Um, I had a, like, this is going back, but I've only had actually one Intel CPU throughout my entire, like, 
history of PCs, in fact, um, in, ex including the ones that weren't able to game and stuff. I've always run AMD processors and never had an issue with them. Um, blue screen. Had an in <laughs> Oh, yeah, part of the <laughs> copious amounts of blue screens I had. No, I meant just um, now, like, as you said that. Never had an issue with them. I need, the, uh, I need an effect on my webcam. <laughs> just, like, cuts me out. Um, but, yeah, currently running AMD at the minute because I... I I'm I'm not usually one to back with my wallet, but I did this time. I bought the first gen Ryzen stuff, and everyone's just like, "Ah, I should have bought Intel." And like, yeah, all right, for like really, literally chasing every frame per second I could possibly want. Yes, but why would I spend two hundred pounds on a motherboard or whatever? You know, getting the decent stuff, and then and if I want to, another thing that AMD do that I really enjoy is the fact that they keep the same socket for a couple of generations, mm. which tends to annoy me massively with Intel. Because if I want to change a CPU on this now, I don't have to buy a new motherboard. I can just put the new CPU in, and and it's good to go. The motherboard vendors have already said yes for updates in the BIOS to be able to support that. All right, you get the issues with okay, the VRMs which supply power to your CPU might not be up to scratch for some of the high-end ones but for the most part you can make a compromise there and say well what could i get and just use on this board and it saves you money and amd have always been like that with their sockets and i find it a bit more consumer friendly than what intel does with theirs um it's marketing though isn't yeah, it i mean they, they might argue is. that it's needed for new generation stuff it's probably not though is it a lot of the time it, that, well, yeah. amd proved that it sort of isn't it it depends because they obviously two companies that work in very different ways like who knows what intel change between their tiktok cycles i probably could bet not much but you know it's just one of those things that yeah just a little bits and bobs that amd do like the fact that i think it's to do with even on their graphics division like they're, they're contributing a lot to open source stuff as well rather than the closed source proprietary stuff that intel do and i mean i know intel sort of opening up now and everyone is kind of thing even microsoft themselves and yeah it's starting to become a bit more free in that regard but yeah just just a little bits a little little like friendly gestures that amd put forward always makes me kind of think well I'll just even if i don't get that extra frame i'll still go with them you know just edge, it edges me towards them kind of thing and it depends what kind of person you are and like how you view your pc hardware if you're viewing it as a tool yes any of the better the best then obviously that's where intel wins quite a lot of the time but i mean i'm not somebody who needs this rig for specific things it's just to enjoy so i mean I, you know i my pc is my life and my livelihood and everything and it's i'm yeah, not using exactly. that as an excuse i am quite literally an intel snob that's stuck in his ways so that there's no 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 different way to look at it but yeah I've, I've never been disappointed apart from getting the wrong motherboard last generation i really <laughs> should not have went with the the brand that i went with um, but other than that i've never had a problem and every single yeah. amd cpu i've had i've had some kind of problem with it and it's usually yeah. been on instability um but that was many 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 moons ago I and mean, it was before the P, uh, before the pentium 4 for god's sake the last time i had an amd um, so you know yeah. different world it is i mean especially like i can yeah i can agree with that coming on the back of like i tried to virtualize on uh, well, I tried to run Hyper-V on Ryzen. It doesn't seem to work as well as Intel, so they are lacking behind on that kind of thing. So, yeah, as if you're using, as I was intending to, my PC as a tool, maybe AMD aren't always the best, but for the bits that see people seem to care about and rave about gaming, I think they've caught up, and it's good news. It's, mm. yeah, better than it was, obviously. Um, so, yeah, that's my opinions. I'm quite heavily opinionated on AMD. But yeah. No, it's fine. It's good. It's good to have opinions. People love opinions. Um, so anything else in the hardware world, then, that's worth mentioning at the moment? Yeah, the, um, a, well, AMD again, but this time gunning for NVIDIA. The uh, 5700 and 5700X graphics cards that they've just released, which has caused a bit of a uh, back and forth between them and NVIDIA, because NVIDIA have come straight back and said, oh, well, we've got these new super cards, which seem to be from the benchmarks basically there's the 2060 super and 2070 super that have just come out and from what from what i've kind of gathered online a lot of people seem to be saying that they are maybe not failed but kind of not as successful versions of the higher card so the 2060 super is actually a 2070 super. Yeah. yeah that hasn't quite cut the mustard to be a 2070 same with the 2070 super it's basically a 28 a chip that hasn't quite come out well enough to be a 2080 chip so they're just they're coming back with kind of an answer to amd and amd's only got two cards to come out with at the moment so there is rumors that there may be other things that they're not ready to announce yet but at, at the moment it's just again it's 
they're doing a lot to kind of keep the price coming down and the affordability in PC gaming, which is really nice to see. Is um, RAMD attempting to enter into... I, I don't know hardware. I don't really keep up to date with it as much as you two do, so you, you're the resident expert. Um, are they attempting to enter the RTX market, the, the real-time ray tracing market? There I, is... Sorry, Don. I was just going to say there's talkings of it. Um, I There is a graph of their uh, sort of forecast of what they're going to release and in one of the generations is suspected to be ray tracing focused does anyone um, care yet that's what i don't think it's exactly i think if amd keep chasing the rasterization market and keep bringing the affordability of the cards we care about down then they're going to eventually start pulling market share from nvidia which is good because it gives them more money to then keep at it basically yeah, um, I I have an RTX card only, and I'm not showing off necessarily because it's yeah. useless. It is absolutely useless to me. I've played Quake Two RTX, which runs at 28 frames per second in 4K, um, and I've played <laughs> Battlefield Five or mm. Battlefront Two. One of the two. I can, one of them. One of them has got um, RTX in it. Five. Battlefield Five. Um, that runs okay. That yes. runs pretty well. I honestly, as a gamer. Unless you're looking really hard, I don't see that much of a difference. It doesn't affect my game. It doesn't make me feel like I'm more immersed. It does. I don't care that much. I just needed a graphics card update, and I usually go for either the top end or the second to top end card that's out at the moment, based on what I can afford at the time. You know, um, I will probably wouldn't have went for RTX if there was an equivalent card that could do CUDA as well as as this does and could do, you know, 4K rendering quite as well. Even the 1080 cards can't quite match the 2080 cards um, in 4K yet. They can't. They can't or can? No, no, they can't. But I've, I don't know if it's just me. I've got a 1080 Ti and everyone said, oh, it's not quite there for um, 4K gaming. Um, but I think it actually is. What people fail to realize is when they want a card, when they want a graphics card, they want 4K, they're going to stick on the aliasing on and all this stuff and they yep. want ultra settings. Why don't you just back it down a bit? Well, That's what I do. Some yeah. Exactly. It's like, it's a compromise. You've got a super nice resolution. You don't need all the details whacked up. You don't need tessellation on. Who cares? Just, you know, well, I turn, play the game. I, the aliasing is the first thing that I turn off whenever I start yeah. a game because it's, it's useless at 4K. Well, not useless. Yeah. You, do, you can see it if you stare at it and you get your face right close to the screen, but... But when you're moving around, yeah, yeah. it's pointless. I mean, but tessellation, I, mean, yeah. I haven't I haven't attempted to turn off or, or look at what the difference is, but yeah, it's not. It's not. It's a, just, it just brings out, like, it's like a clarity tool, really. You just slide it, like, mm. if you, you don't get a slider, but if you turn it on, you'll definitely notice things like bricks and stuff sort of stick out and there are a bit more fine edges to them and more polygons there, basically. Subsurface scattering, um, again, you can yeah. notice that when you stood still, but when you're moving around, very little... Very little exactly. difference. Um, it gets to the point of almost being gimmicky, really, doesn't it? Like, I, I imagine that with the RTX cards, especially when you're playing RTX games like Battlefield Five, it probably does that thing that like 3D movies always do, where like it very, you know, purposefully shows you something. It's like, look at this graphics, look at this fire, wow, mm. RTX. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can get on board with that. Yeah, and yeah, not showing you the uh, the. Yeah, obviously we're going to go into the RTX memes here and the Lion yeah, King. You remember I mean, the Lion King one that came out a while ago? It was the CGI versus the old Disney release RTX yeah. versus <laughs> non-RTX. It really did confuse me on the NVIDIA side, just quickly. Um, why they have released RTX so early, though, I don't actually think anyone's ever sort of figured out why they dropped it so soon. In You know, with what they had at the time, they just thought, yeah, we're going to drop it and see what, you know, bleeding edge tech nerds will buy it kind of thing and like yeah it'll be great but i mean is it just the only thing i can think of is maybe helping development houses out with getting user share you know share of those cards out they can but i don't actually know they can, they give can developers... obviously get hardware samples as many as they want yeah yeah, yeah so i mean they can give them the card to get a heads up because it's going to be four or five years sometimes before some of the rtx the games that support rtx are going to be out anyway um, but I, I said the only reason I've got it is because I was in the market for a new card. I needed one. I was getting to. I was really starting to struggle with my nine eighty. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered. You know. Yeah. All right, anything else hardware right? Hardware wise at the moment. 
Not at the moment. Um, I think that's pretty much covered it all. Good stuff. Okay, well, then we shall sh- we shall close the show, then, in that case. Thank you very much to everybody who's been listening. Um, we will have... Um, we will have this up and running. I said, been listening. Who who is listening to this in the future? I'm used to doing live shows. You see, that's the problem here. Uh, this isn't isn't live anymore. So, uh, for those who are going to watch in the future, hello. Um, so yes, hello that's the end of the show. The Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll hope to hope to see you next time on uh, Resident Arcade. Are we doing it? Are we doing it? Cool. That was me. I'm sorry. I know I didn't make (laughs) it very clear. No, that's fine. (laughs) So you can listen to our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at www.resonancearcade.com. The website will be updated with all the new show info when Chris gets time. And now on to Matt. You can also follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade, where we publish show announcements and news, and you can join our Discord channel via discord.resonancearcade.com. And that's it. All that's left to say is goodbye from everyone. See you later. Bye. Ta-ta.